Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful Podcast, a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful Podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. And welcome to GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Alyssa Joe, and I'm going to start today's episode off with a little bit of some scientific information um, that I think is pretty cool. So scientists have reverse dementia in mice with a drug that reduces brain inflammation. Okay, so scientists have been trying to figure out a cure for dementia um, or a way for a a way to help for a long time, right? So it looks like they have finally reversed dementia in mice with a drug that reduces brain inflammation. Usually they target typical rogue proteins associated with dementia, but for the first time they have done it by reducing inflammation with a drug. So up until now, most dementia treatments have targeted the amyloid plaques that are found in people with Alzheimer's disease. However, the latest study published in Science Translational Medicine suggests that targeting inflammation in the brain might stop it in its tracks. So experiments at the University of California, Berkeley, um, say senile mice were significantly better at learning new tasks and become just as most like quick with learning and everything as those half their age. So experts are optimistic that it'll work on humans and it could lead for a cure to for the devastating neurological condition. But it does, it even gets better. They're hoping the drugs developed with their strategy can also help brains recover from strokes, con- concussion, or traumatic brain injuries. The successful treatment in mice supports a growing body of research which says that our blood-brain barriers begin to leak as we get older. I had no idea this is actually the scientific thing behind it. But this is the filtration system that blocks infectious organisms, letting in chemicals that destroy neurons. Crazy. So previous MRI scans uh, by the study of co-author Professor Alan Friedman have found that the barrier breaks down in nearly 60% of people by the age of 70. Okay, so experiments in mice showed this causes inflammatory fog that alters the brain's rhythms, which causes tiny seizure-like events, which leads to the momentary lapses in the memory. So this is shedding fresh light on the symptoms of dementia and other brain diseases. So in the experiment, when they remove the fog, uh, within days, the aged brain acts like a young brain. And it's really, really optimistic, I guess, in finding in the terms of the capacity for plasticity that exists in the brain so we can reverse brain aging. That is what senior author Professor Danielle Koffer of the University of California said. Um, So scans called EEGs revealed similar brainwave disruption in humans with Alzheimer's, mild cognitive impairment, and epilepsy. So basically, it means leaky barriers and abnormal brain rhythms detected by MRI and EEG EEG scans, respectively, can be used to flag people with dementia, as well as signal an intervention opportunity using a drug to slow or reverse the disease. This is a lot of scientific things. (laughs) The drug called IPW blocks a gene known as TGF that fuels the inflammation triggering blood protein albinum. So, Professor Koffer said, we now have two biomarkers that tell you exactly where the blood-brain barrier is leaking so you can select patients for treatment and make decisions about how long you give the drug. It's 
pretty crazy. She says you can follow them, and when the blood-brain barrier is healed, you no longer need the drug. So when they gave the drug to the mice in doses that lowered the genes activity, their brains looked younger. There was less inflammation and improved brain waves as well as reduced seizures. Uh, the mice also navigated a maze and learned spatial tasks similar to a young mouse. So in analysis of the brain tissue from humans, Professor Coffer found evidence of albinum in aged brains. And altogether, the evidence points to dysfunction in the brain's blood filtration system as one of the earliest triggers of neurological aging. So I guess this team has now started a company to develop a drug to heal the blood-brain barrier for clinical treatment, and it may eventually help other adults with dementia or Alzheimer's disease who have demonstrated leakage of the blood-brain barrier. So currently, the only drugs for dementia or Alzheimer's treat the symptoms and not the cause. But this specific drug opens the door to changes. That was a lot of scientific stuff for me. But I think this is pretty cool. Um, They actually might have found something that tackles the cause and not just the symptoms. It'll be very interesting to see where this goes next because they've been trying to figure this stuff out for a very long time. So, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool that, you know, it's one step closer to some amazing health changes in the country. Uh, my next story is about two women uh, and one of their, their sons who are making a difference uh, to help kids with special needs. So a coffee shop in New Jersey aims to change how people with special needs are employed. So Pam Donovan uh, is a mom whose son, Ethan, has been living with special needs his whole life. Ethan has autism and he's nonverbal. But his mother, Pam, and his speech uh, pathologist, Marcia, have come together to help get him into the workforce. Of course, they want to see him succeed. They are obviously very close with him. And so they came up with an idea. Pam and Marcia opened a nonprofit coffee shop that employs and educates adults like Ethan in Little Falls, New Jersey. They call the coffee shop Ethan and the Bean, which I think is such a cute little name. Um, The unemployment rate for special needs adults is actually really high. I was surprised at how high this was. Um, Unemployment rate for special needs right now is between 80 to 85%. I think that's crazy. So, of course, there are some jobs out there, but Pam and Marcia were concerned for what was going to happen when Ethan graduates. And, of course, they thought others must be concerned as well. So their mission is to employ individuals with intellectual and development disabilities to change the mindset of society one cup of coffee at a time. One of Ethan's favorite activities at work is grinding the beans, uh, and he communicates these things by using an iPad. And he even gets to greet customers by using um, a voice on an iPad, which is super cool. It's crazy what technology can do to help us, right? Uh, All the employees of the coffee shop make minimum wage and above, which is actually not typical for those of special needs to receive that, as well as tips. Uh, They usually work for below minimum wage or just volunteer experience. Um, But the coffee shop is changing that. Uh, These uh, young adults, they craft the drinks, work the register, interact with customers. You know, they do everything that you would normally do at a coffee shop. Uh, So Pam and Marcia have taken this above and beyond. Um, They've even recruited PhD students from the nearby Caldwell University to further the training for the special needs and non-special needs staff members. So they're doing this and going the extra yard so that they can encourage more employees and employers to work confidently with individuals of all ranges of disabilities. So this cafe is a lot more than just a place to get an espresso. It is a coffee shop with a purpose. And I think that doing something like this, it's going to really make an impact on this and the way that people do approach employing special needs people. I think this is a really good, really interesting take to make an impact on that. My next story is probably one of the cutest stories I've ever heard in my entire life. This one will really melt your heart. So five-year-old Michael Orlando Clark Jr. was so excited about being officially adopted. Um, Of course, that's an exciting thing for a five-year-old or for anybody. But at five years old, he was so excited that he invited his entire kindergarten class to his adoption hearing. 
So the Lisa Say the ceremony was adorable. As I was reading this story, I saw some pictures and it is literally like the cutest thing ever. Um, so all the youngsters were waving heart shaped wands around the courtroom and they actually got to each tell the judge about how much they love Michael. I think that is like the best people to like speak up for you. Young kids, because they just tell the truth, right? <laughs> they are so open and honest. So yeah, Michael brought his entire kindergarten class to his adoption hearing. They were all showing their support. They all said how much they love him. And I just thought that was a cute little story to add at the end here before the break. Because what a heartwarming courtroom that must have been. It's time for a break. But when we get back, I have more really touching and awesome stories to share with you. So don't go anywhere. The GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or any where you find podcasts just type gsmc in the search bar back to gsmc america still beautiful podcast as promised i have some awesome more heart-wrenching stories for you okay so grab your best friend and hug them tight because this story will make you want to spend all your time with your best buddy (laughs) so olive woodward and kathleen seville who are both 89 years old are now are known to getting into some trouble while they were younger, I guess. And now the trouble continues. Uh, These two have been best friends since they were 11 years old. And now these two are in the same care home, continuing to cause some trouble, of course. Um, Kathleen moved into this home back in 2018, and her best friend, Olive, really missed her when she went into the home. She actually went to go visit Kathleen every single Saturday for lunch. And I guess a couple months ago, Olive decided that she was going to move in well, as well. She thought that, you know, she went to see Kathleen all the time. You know, Kathleen was there for all the laughs, shoulder the cry on, absolutely everything in her life. So she was like, why not just move in as well? (laughs) So now they're just down the hall from each other on the same floor. So, of course, they see each other all the time. They are actually both widows. And I was reading this article and they said that they added that they love getting dolled up together. This is my favorite part. They said, we are like giggling schoolgirls and we put on our lippy and get dressed up. And as oh, and we always say to each other, if you got it, flaunt it. <laughs> At 89 years old, you gotta still flaunt it. So these two just dreamt about growing old together. And I guess dreams really do come true at any age. Talk about best friends forever. You know, I think we've all said that to somebody. Let's be best friends forever. Um, And speaking of dreams coming true at any age, I thought this story was pretty interesting as well. I'm sure you've heard of the saying, it's never too late to follow your dreams. Well, Alan Tripp is the perfect example of exactly that. The 102-year-old Alan has just released his first ever studio album of jazz songs. (laughs) 102? And he just has a studio album of jazz songs. So cool. He composed it with his counterpart, Marvin Wiseboard, which makes them actually the oldest songwriting duo in history. No kidding. Uh, 102 years old. So I guess this really started only about two years ago when Alan composed a poem about growing old for his 100th birthday. And he shared it with his friend, Marvin. I guess Marvin got super excited about it. They live in the same retirement home in Pennsylvania. And yeah, Marvin got super excited about that and he wanted to add some music to this poem just because he loved it so much. He thought it was, it was so good. 
So then that got Alan even more inspired to keep writing poems, and they turned it in, them into jazz ballads. <laughs> so surprisingly, these two actually have no experience with making music, but they managed to rally up a great team of musicians to record their songs in the studio, and they now have their published debut eight-song album, and guess what it's called? <laughs> it's called The Senior Songbook. So it's all jazz ballads for seniors. And Marvin says he's never had so much fun in his life. <laughs> so the songs cover all things about growing old and the emotions experienced by people regardless of their age. So I guess they cover things from heartbreak, platonic friendship, to love and appreciation. You know, and they were asked about their secret to longevity. I love asking this to uh, seniors. But I guess Alan answered, when you're doing something that gives you joy and satisfaction, you don't get older. You stop the aging process, and it is. And one of my secrets is never retire. Retire to something, not f from something. I think that is such a cool saying. It's such very wise words. At 102 years old, right? I guess they have to be. Um, it's so inspiring. Two awesome stories about some seniors really living life to its fullest. You know, making the most out of every single day because life is short even at 102 it's still life is short and they're creating albums at 102 years old that is just absolutely crazy to me now jeremy hilton stepped down from his navy mission for a new mission and that is to stay at home and take care of his daughter so Jeremy and Renee Hilton were both active duty military when their first child was born 17 years ago with special needs. One of them had to step down from their military duties and Jeremy decided that it would be him, making him one of the small but growing male military spouses. His wife Renee continued her Air Force career. Their daughter was born with special needs where she was required years of therapy and surgeries. So they really needed to be there for, for her, of course. Only a year after their daughter was born, Renee, who is now a special agent for the Air Force Office of Special Investigation. So Jeremy decided to stay home to take care of their daughter and make sure the house and everything stays running. So usually it, it is military wives that stay home and take care of the kids, the family, the house. But now more and more uh, males are staying home and the wife is actually getting to go out and continue her career. So the last count was 7% of military spouses staying at home were male. But that number is increasing, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, Jeremy mentions it's important to be able to laugh at yourself once in a while and laugh at the fact that you will be called a military wife sometimes. Um, times are changing, but of course, those jokes are still going to come at you. Uh, but one of my favorite quotes when I was reading and looking into this story, when one's in the army, your whole family serves. The whole family has to come together and... It's so true. The whole family does serve. These people have to make sacrifices, not just, you know, to be in the military and fight for the country, but sacrifices in their family life and their relationships. And I just think it's really cool that, you know, times are changing and it's it's not all the women staying home. Uh, they are actually being able to continue their career in the military and do what they love. And the men are more willing to stay home and take care of the kids. It is time for a break, but do not go anywhere because when we get back, I have some really great give back holiday stories. I can't help myself. It's that time of the year. I love Christmas and I love all the things that people do around Christmas time. I think these stories are a lot of fun. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. 
whatever it may be. Visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast. So I feel like this month I've always had um, some Christmas stories in all of these episodes, but I can't help myself. It's that time of year and everyone is doing amazing things. There's so many amazing stories kind of about giving in Christmas time. So I I just can't help myself. I love Christmas. Um, And I think these stories are just so magical. So I guess this Christmas is going to be extra special, uh, extra magical from some employees at St. John Properties. So St. John Properties announced a very, very, very big surprise for their employees. During their annual holiday party in Baltimore, Maryland, they announced, are you ready for this, a $10 million bonus for the 198 employees. $10 million bonus absolutely crazy so the amount each person is receiving depends on how long they've been there and their role of course at the company but i guess it worked out to be about roughly fifty thousand dollar bonuses uh one employee stanley chez he's a maintenance technician and he will be receiving more than two hundred thousand dollars all the employees are in absolute shock about this very generous bonus but stanley was particularly very very shocked and he says that he's still in shock he started the, this real estate development company back in 1981, and he says that grown men were crying. It was absolutely an unbelievable moment for everybody in that room. Um, all the employees are very, very appreciated, of course, of the generous bonuses and say that it validates all their hard work and time that they put in to this company every single day. Some of them are planning to actually buy a new car, down payments on a new house, or other things, of course. But every every single employee said that they will definitely be paying it forward this holiday season. So all of this happened because the company hit their goal of developing 20 million square feet in eight states. Definitely a great celebration for the company and the employees. This Christmas will definitely be an extra special year, I think, and some lives will definitely be changed. You know, you are definitely not expecting that kind of money at the end of a year. Like, that can probably just change so many people's lives. Like, I can't imagine being surprised with something like that. And I think it's so cool that this company really did, you know, celebrate their their achievement of their goal by treating their employees very, very well, giving them these bonuses, uh... Talk about a magical Christmas. Santa Claus uh, was very, very good to these people. Uh, Such a cool story. I I bet we're all kind of wishing we were working for St. John Properties at this moment. (laughs) Um, I'm going to keep on the Christmas train because, like I said, I just can't help myself. But Adam Armstrong returned to the streets where he grew up so he could hand out more than $12,000 worth of toys to the local children. So let me rewind a little bit. Uh, He grew up poor in a mostly government-subsidized apartment complex in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Uh, Adam was actually sent to jail when he was 18 years old, where he served three months' sentence for marijuana possession. When he was released, he knew it was time to make a difference in his life, and that's exactly what he did. So that's what he did. He turned his life around. He ended up in Baltimore and working for a lot of different jobs uh, until he got into the mortgaging business. He continued to get more and more financially comfortable. uh, And so as he did continue to get more and more financially comfortable, he was compelled to give back to people living in poverty. And especially where his journey all began. He started with donating a a ton of toys to local charities during the holiday season But now he, yeah, he wanted to go back to where his journey all began. 
So Adam is now 35 years old. He is a three-year-old little girl, and he is setting a crazy great example for her. So he drove to his former neighborhood in a 26-foot moving truck with 1,327 toys to give away to all the children. But it gets even crazier than that. It wasn't even just, like, stuffed animals or, like, things like that. He actually gave away things like bikes, remote-controlled cars, like, real Barbie dolls. I guess safe to say nothing, like, dollar store bought. Everything was obviously really good quality, like, bikes and everything. Like, ugh. Um, He didn't miss a single kid. Every single kid felt so special. And I guess you could just see, you know, the joy and happiness on Adam's face. Uh, When I was reading... Looking into this story, the comments about it was just, like, the joy on this man's face was incredible. Uh, You could totally tell that his heart was 110% in it. He said he was just very, very happy to bring joy to the little kids this holiday season. It's like, you can't put a price on seeing a smile on little kids' faces. That is absolutely priceless. The reward and the pleasure was mine. Well, he's definitely right about that. You know, seeing a smile on little kid's face is definitely priceless, um, especially in a community like that. You know, it means so much to them to be able to have something to, a new toy to play with, especially like a new bike or something. Uh, Going back to your old roots and, you know, making a difference, you know, it really shows some self-reflection, I think, like where you all began and being appreciative of where you all start, right? So I just think that's such a great giving back holiday story, you know, helping out where his roots are. Very touching and close to his heart. And I think that's where a lot of us give, you know, where we feel the most when we give is when it's straight from, well, we should be always giving straight from our heart. But when we do give straight from our heart, something that's close to us, it just means that much more, right? So, to get that opportunity to go back to your hometown and give back super super cool for my last story i thought this kind of summed up the episode pretty well uh charlie and dorothy hale of rochester new york spend every single day like it's christmas morning so the couple dorothy is a retired chemist and charlie is a retired doctor and they're both now in their 80s but they are still really active and they're actually really passionate about something in particular they both really enjoy restoring instruments to their former glory and then they enjoy even more giving them away by the hundreds yeah so this couple spends their time repairing instruments and giving them away i guess they have donated nearly a thousand instruments to the rochester school district through the rochester education foundation Uh, they give instruments away to schools and people like anyone that's in need or charities whatever the case may be uh I guess Dorothy says that she always loved to take things apart, but it's about time that she learned how to put something together. So this started a few years ago when the couple decided to purchase some broken instruments and then actually take a class in instrument repair so they could do this together. And now they spend all their time repairing instruments and giving back to those people that need it. It's just such a selfless act right and they said that they're really just hoping that they're creating a ripple effect which i think they definitely are they're both strong believers that music can really create somebody and it really helps kids to like better their education in school um you know sometimes it really helps to get them to focus mental health all of that and for you know of course it's awesome to have instruments in your school have that opportunity to be in a band class and to play music that definitely makes kids want to want to go to school so yeah what a cool couple spending their time repairing instruments and giving them away they really are living in some christmas morning give back spirit Thank you so, so much for listening to today's episode of GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Alyssa Joe. As always, I had such a great time sharing these wonderful stories with you. Uh, Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Please like and follow us on social media and leave a five-star review. Till next time. Thank you.
You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows from the GSMC Podcast Network, from social media news to marketing news, and even weird news the gsmc podcast network has you covered you can also follow us on twitter and facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the golden state media concepts america still beautiful podcast